Hi, this is Lou from Gorguts, and you are watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 199 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews here backstage at the Eastern Atlanta, Georgia, and I have the honor and the privilege to speak with Luke LeMay from the legendary Gorguts. <laughs> How are you doing today, Luke? Good. Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. Anytime. No, you've been on this awesome tour right now with Cannibal Corpse, Mayhem, and Blood Incantation. Yep. So how has the tour been? The most typical interview question ever, I always say. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, uh, I feel uh, very, very lucky and privileged, you know, to be, uh, to be part of, the, of that tour. And also, uh, it kind of come uh, full circle for, for us and Cannibal because uh, we, we both did our first U.S. tour together in 92, like uh, 30, 32 years ago. Yeah. So so it's really it's really nice to find each other again on the road because it's been a long time that we've seen each other. So to share the stage again, you know, and uh, it's just it's just great for for all those reasons and many mo many other reasons. I mean, the fans have been amazing, and uh, I was just saying uh, the other night, you know, to to uh, to someone, uh, I, I'm really uh, amazed about uh, how extreme music went. It went a long way because you know to see it because it's no ballad evening you know with blood incantation us mayhem and cannibal corpse to see this type of music gather two thousand plus people on the on the week night it, it, it's just fucking amazing hell yeah yeah so kind of like the format is I want to do like a speed run of your discography and talk about like your musical history mm -hmm. so take me back to young Luke LeMay so kind of growing up what were the first bands that got you into metal and what made you want to be a vocalist and guitarist uh, uh, of course I started like every everybody listening to Iron Maiden Judas Priest and Metallica but as soon as I got into like Slayer and then I discovered that uh, possess seven churches I was really more attracted by uh, 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 what became death metal. I was always looking for the new extreme band. So then uh, Celtic Frost and, uh, and and of course Death when I heard Scream Bloody Gore, which was like a heavier version of Seven Churches, so to speak, you know, for me, especially for the vocals. So that's where I decided I really want to do this, you know, so uh, so that's how it started. It, it's for uh, projects, but just learning my instrument and stuff, you know, with friends that form other bands. With, we, 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 we were a metal community in Sherbrooke, you know, where the band started. So we all played with each other at some point, you know, but not for too long. And then uh, you had uh, all these bands forming at the same time. But gorgot has been my main project for for 30, 30 something years, you know, I, I had Negativa when I stopped Gorguts for maybe two, three years, three years, but that was Big Steve's project, Hurdle, you know, uh, but it, it wasn't my band, you know, I just joined to, because to, we, we enjoy making music together, but it was his baby, you know, and then I went back to Gorguts right after. Yeah. So. So almost 35 years of gore guts, which is yes. crazy. Yeah. Did you think that you'd be around for almost 35 years? I'm sorry? Did you think that you'd be around for almost 35 no. years? No, But I say no. I mean, you just do it because you like it. You don't set up a goal. I want to be around for 25 years. You just, first thing you know, you look back in the mirror. And it's like, wow, already 20 years. Old. But but in the, those 30 years, there were there were long breaks as well. We, we, were, we never been the kind of band that released a record every two years to do festivals and this and that, which is fine, you know, but it wasn't my, it's never been my agenda. And me, I like doing many different things as well. I, I don't just do music, I do woodworking. I like classical music composition. I like, so I cannot focus on, on, on the one thing only for a long, long time, you know? I like to, let's say like when I do a, a, a record for Gorguts, it takes me a long time to, to get it out of my system. I cannot start working on the record three days after I just delivered one, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise I'll be repeating the same things. So it takes me a long time to, to get it out of my system, to start, to start fresh, you know? So that's why during these times I do other things. I like working manually, you know? I like to, uh, yeah, or I'll do more like a orchestral composition for a while. Then I stop this, I come back to metal, you know? So that's why, it was, it, it takes a lot of time, you know, for, uh, I'm not, cons uh, it, l because if I, if I don't write a record for Gorguts, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't play music, you know, I don't, I don't play guitar so uh, this much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I was asking to Dave uh, Davidson uh, from uh, Revocation the other day. He is a guitar player, let's say. I was asking him, if you go on vacation, do you bring a guitar? He's like, fuck yeah, but not me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me but I, and, and this is great, but me, uh, but first thing first, I'm never a good player like he is, you know, he's, he's, he's in another. But me, uh, I don't picture myself like a guitar player. I'm more, I picture myself more as a composer. And guitar happens to be the tool that I'm comfortable with to express myself. I'm not a guitar player who writes music. You, you understand? Yeah. It's the other way around. So, yeah. Yeah. Then I uh, so just played around locally in Quebec and then eventually got signed to Roadrunner Records, mm -hmm. your first label. So how did they find Gore Guts? Uh, it was, uh, again, I was doing a lot of tape trading. And uh, I happened to meet uh, Borivoy that does Blabbermouth today, but he was writing back in the days in Metal Maniacs, and he was writing in uh, Metal Forces in Europe. And I happened to meet him uh, a, a few times in Montreal when I went to see shows. And uh, he, uh, he made reviews of our demos and blah, blah, blah. And he was friend with Monty. So uh, when, the, when there was this, uh, this big buzz on the death metal uh, thing, and we, we had a good name for ourselves in the underground back then, and uh, he's the one that, that, that talked about us to Monty Connor, and then Monty happened to like the demo, and that's how we, uh, we ended up on, uh, on our, our tape ended up on his desk, you know? Yeah. So, but they, 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 they keep an eye on the underground. It's like, I guess it's like in sport, you know? Let's say you can be scouting for uh, for a ho for a hockey team, so you're gonna go in the other level to look for the good players or something. So they they did the same thing, but with with death metal, so to speak. Yeah, and yeah. then going into your first album, Considered Dead. What was the thought process making the debut Gorgat's album? What do you mean thought process? Like it's like the writing and recording process. Just uh, just writing songs, and uh, of course these are all like little stories, you know of. Uh, stories about death <laughs> any kind of context i mean we're teenagers you know we were uh, i wasn't i wasn't like now you know doing lots of research you know for for a topic like colored sands or whatever which is fine you know for back in the days we do we you know a record is always a snapshot of the best thing you can do at this point of your life that's how i see it yeah you know? And that's why sometimes it's kind of uh, interesting. You look back, it's like, oh, I would write this today. I would never do that like that. I would never do this like that, you know, which is good because you evolve as an artist, you know. But Absolutely. the thought process was really instinctive and really naive in a way. But you do, you, you try to do your best, you know. That's, that's, it, it, it's hard to explain, you know. You just do. You, you, me, me, anyway, at any time, uh, 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 and uh, um, my thought process in any period of the band, I've always tried to do my best to write the music that I, that I want to hear. What would I like to hear buying a record? You know, I like to be surprised by a song. So that this is my, th my thought process. You know, I like to create songs with surprises, with like, oh, you, you got to have that moment, you know, that special breakdown that happens, that... Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. So even at a young stage, I always been guided by this, you know. Yeah, and I sort of love the lyrically. I know you, you know you touch upon like the brutality and anti-religion. So when it comes to like making lyri lyrics, do you have to put yourself in like a like that mind frame to come up with lyrics, or no. does the lyrics come up naturally? No, I mean lyrics is a very difficult part for me because I, I'm I'm French, and to write poetry in a different language, it's kind of a it's a, it's not easy i find even if i can speak you know i can speak good english to have a conversation but to uh, to write lyrics and poetry you know i don't want to write texts you know like and sound like a fucking uh, 8 year old you know so i need to do a lot of research for voc vocabulary so it's a so it's a more difficult process than if i would be english speaking by uh, by uh, by nature you know but uh, but, uh, but 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 like religion, like you mentioned, I never, I never, I never talked about any religion in my lyrics. I've never been interested in that. No, I'm, I, I was, uh, I've been more interested in the supernatural or uh, fantasy. Like erosion is more uh, fantasy, but morbid stories. You know, uh, uh, colored sand is about Tibet. Uh, Pleiades dust tells the story about a library. You know, 
but it's always the angle that you bring. There's, 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 there's a way to sing songs about the library and still be heavy. It depends what, what angle you choose to talk about it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then going into the next album, mm -hmm. Erosion of Sanity, because mm -hmm. usually with the debut album, you have your entire life to write, and there was a lot of hype with the first album. I mean, when it came to making Erosion of Sanity, did you felt pressure to follow up color, color, Considered Dead? I mean, pressure, again, you know, you, you all, I me, mean, uh, it's important that I, I never want to say the same thing twice. I, we, I never stick to a formula. You know, if you listen to Consider Dead and Erosion, they're very different, you know. But Erosion, I was really influenced by, uh, like, when I discovered the music from Suffocation. They were very technical. Uh, and I was lucky enough to, when I went to New York City one, one, one weekend to do interviews, I got to hang out with them and see them practice. Blew my mind. Totally. So when I came back home, I said, wow, I got to step up my game here. I wanted to be as good as them to play guitar. So that's why Erosion is very guitaristically technical, you know. Yeah. It's not even close to, uh, to consider dead, you know. Hell yeah. So I was really inspired by them and we became friends and everything. But I was really uh, inspired by their skills, you know. And I, I, I thought they were amazing songwriter as well, you know. It, it just blew my fucking mind. Even today, I'm total fanboy. I go to a suffocation show. You'll see me in front, horns up. Yeah, just love it. You know, it's it's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. And this year does mark thirty years of erosion of sanity. Is mm -hmm. there like a chance we can get a celebration somehow? Maybe throw in some deep cuts tonight. Uh, maybe not a deep cut, but you'll hear a song for sure. Yeah, yeah. But talking about deep cuts, you know, uh, it's been in my uh, my thought process. You know, I want to relearn some of the songs that haven't been played in in uh, over 25 years you know for for anyway but the thing is is that when i come back home after this tour i want to focus on writing a new record but i want to relearn some deep cuts from my older record as well so we can refresh a set list whenever we're going to play live again you know so hell yeah yeah and then going into the next album, Obscura. I love that album. What was that like going from Erosion of Sanity to Obscura? And I noticed there was like a five-year gap between mm -hmm. the two. What was the reason for like the five-year gap? Did you just want to like hone in your craft? No. No, the five-year gap was only due to the fact that nobody wanted to sign us with this music. Because the record was finished in 94 and it came out in 98. Because we, uh, we did a European tour for Erosion in, in the spring of 93 with a new lineup, with the lineup of Obscura, okay? But it was Steve McDonald playing drums, but uh, Steve McDonald wrote Obscura with us, but he didn't play on the record because he, he just left the band for a short period of time anyway. But my point is, is that when we came back from that European tour and we started working on, on new music, we intentionally cut bridges with the uh, with the, all the, the, I don't like the word cliche, but all the essence that we had in the band sound, like fast picking, like uh, Slayer beats and all that, what everything that Erosion is, we wanted to intentionally omit that in the music. And we say, we, we got to find our own voice. So let's say if anybody comes to writing session with a riff that sounds like Erosion, even if it's the riff of the century, we're not going to take it because we don't want those ingredients in the music anymore. So that's how the new sound appeared, you know. But but the album was written pretty quickly. We started writing the album in the spring of 93, let's say uh, April, May. And by November of 93, we had like 10 songs written. And then we jammed these songs for a year, two year. Maybe, maybe after a year we said, hey, nothing's happening with record because I was sending tapes to label and no answer, no reply, whatever. No internet still back then. Wow. So, and then we say, what if we write, uh, we, we, we write again? And then we wrote Nostalgia and Obscura. And then we sent tapes again, nothing was happening. So we jammed those 12 songs for up to 98. And we didn't write any music at all. And then when we got the, uh, we, we happened to play a show in Chicago and uh, Marty Payne from Olympic Record was there and he offered us a deal and we said yes, you know. Yeah. That's, that's how we got signed. But, but the record was done for a while. It could have came out in, 90, in, in 93 if we wanted. Yeah. Know? So, uh, yeah. 
And so hard that, to believe. That, that's, that's what explains the, the gap. It's because the industry didn't want to. And also, death metal was on a downhill already. And that, I mean, for, for back in the days, Obscura, well, even today, it's not an easy record. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people say, I listen up to Clouded and I stop, you know, so it's, uh, it's very demanding. But today, that's why I, I'm very pleased and amazed to see that we play Obscura and it's like a catchy song and everybody's like, hey, like if we play fucking uh, Rod and Anime. You know, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't the case back in the days. Yeah, and it's hard to believe it's also 25 <laughs> years of Obscura too. Yeah, yeah. So, so how do you feel about it now, 25 years later? Oh, I think it aged pretty well. You like know? fine wine. I'm sorry. Like fine wine. Exactly. You know, it could easily be a record that came out this year. I think. You know, it doesn't sound dated. You know, I think. You know, so uh, yeah, I'm very proud of that record. I wouldn't. You know, maybe I wouldn't do this and that the same way but that's 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 uh that's an artistic uh uh process you know but i'm very uh, i'm very proud and happy about the fact that we intentionally were able to found our own voice you know with all the restriction that we impose ourselves that's what made this because if you wait to new things to happen by accident it can take a long time in the process but if you restrict yourself you impose yourself rules to get out of your comfort zone. That's how things change, I think, quicker. But it can be very uh, more difficult and because it's not comfortable at all. What am I going to say? Things differently. You, you got to create a new language, so it's not easy. It's restrictive in the middle, in the beginning. But as as we as we went up, we can do things this way now, this way now, you know, and then expand it's like learning a new language you know absolutely yeah you pretty much have a great way to think yeah and then the, the next album from wisdom to hate i like that album i think a very underrated gore guts album mm -hmm. in my opinion so tell me about like the making of that album uh, same thing it was pretty really spontaneous it went pretty quickly you know and then uh dan mongrain uh, chewy joined the band during that time and uh, he wrote the song on the record and participated to the arrangement. And er but it was a pre pretty, pretty quick writing. But to me and a lot of people from Wisdom is like a more uh, epurated version of Obscura, so to speak. So it, that's the album that could have came out in between Erosion and Obscura and not the other way around. You know? Yeah. Don't you think? I agree. I yeah, feel like yeah. it definitely fits in it, perfectly. It's not as, 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 as a hard listening. Uh, it's an easier listen. Uh, record, but if you listen carefully, the riff are in the same aesthetic as Obscura, but for some reason, it, it has the, a less chaotic perception to the listener. You know, you know, it's easier listening. Yeah, and then you toured for a little bit, and then Gorguts broke up in 2005. So what was the reason? 2001. For oh, 2001. Yeah. But Metal Archive said 05 for no, some reason. Because 2001. I mean, 2001. We toured, and after we, we stopped, because 2002, 2003, um, Steve McDonald committed suicide. Oh, shit. And then uh, me, I, w I was done with the band. And I was happy, you know, with what the band done. It's not like I have many box unchecked. I was really happy with the discography and everything. And I just wanted to do something else with my life, you know. That's when I started to do woodworking, and which I still do today. I do carving, you know. That's what I do uh, as, a, as a living, you know. I... And um, and then Big Steve recontacted me, said, "Hey, you want to join Negativa?" That was two thousand six, seven ish. I think it was two thousand six because you had yeah, that self-titled EP. Yeah, two thousand six. And then uh, while I was in Negativa, one day Big Steve suggested me, "Hey, you should do." Uh, he said, "You should do another Gorgas record because the twenty anniversary was uh, around the corner." I said, "Yeah, I'll think about it." And then uh, that's when I decided, but it's him that suggested me. I was like, I'm done with this. And uh, I, I would have never thought that would do uh, another Gorgos record at all. Yeah. And then I decided, I said, yeah, you know, it's a good idea. And so that's when I had in mind, I, I, I wanted to play with Colin. And then uh, Big Steve wanted to be part of it. And I said, dude, we already do Negativa. So I think I'm going to go with a new guitar player. And he suggested me to check out uh, Kevin. Because he knew about the Shrytnia. I didn't know the Shrytnia. And he said, Colin and Kevin already played together. So, hmm. so I contacted them. I was already in touch with, uh, with John. Um, 
and uh, that's how it came together. I just I just dropped a line to everybody on MySpace, and I said, uh, "Hey, Luke here. I want to do another Gorgots record. You want to step in?" Everybody said yes. So I said, "Let me wait. I have three songs together. I'm gonna send those to you, and uh, we'll start from there." But it clicked uh, right away. So oh yeah. So there wasn't like any hesitation to restart no, the band. No, but the thing it, it went. The relationship was really easy, and we get along great. Uh, uh, and we get along great to work together, you know, as uh, as musician. So uh, it was uh, it was very uh, uh, natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then of course, twenty thirteen, you dropped probably one of my favorite comeback albums, Colored Sands. I love that that album. What was sort of like the, the thought process making the um, th that album? Because being as it has been a long gap between from mm -hmm. from Wisdom to Hate to Colored Sands, you felt like nervous at all? No. No, I just again, you know, I just went with the my main rule. I want to write the music that I want to hear, you know, and uh, wrote all the music and uh, spent like almost a year just on the lyrics, you know, because I read a lot of books on Tibet. Blah, blah, blah. But the subject happened by accident, you know. I, I anyway, I just came across, you know, the the process of mandala making. I was really fascinated by that, so I said, oh, I want to make a record about that. But in the beginning, I wanted to make the whole record about Mandela's. That's where Colored Sands means, you know. And uh, and then, you know, it was too much, too ambitious, because it's a very complex ritual and thing. So, dude, I, I could still be reading books about that uh, what, ten years after, and it's very. So I barely crashed, uh, scratched the surface, you know, with the with the topic. But then the angle changed, and I decided to speak about Tibet as a general topic. So you got four songs about the beauties of that culture. And then you have the instrumental, the string orchestra thing. And then after that, everything pivot in, 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 in drama, you know, with the Chinese invasion, uh, public immolation, people trying to leave the country but getting killed, you know, to go to Nepal and uh, a, a neighbor country, you know. And then the, the last song is about Tibet slowly being choked, you know, by the Chinese culture and uh, assimilating. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, it's hard to believe now it's also 10 years of that album. Yeah. Um, so how do you feel about that? Because I feel like the tone wise, it's pretty much the best sounding Gorguts album. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has a great production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, again, you know, <laughs> time flies so, so quickly, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. What was the question again? It's like, yeah. like, how do you feel about it now, ten years later? I mean, uh, again, you know, I think it stood up uh, time really, really good. It doesn't sound uh, uh, dated, you know. I think, and uh, no, I'm very, I'm very proud of the record. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, th your most recent recording was the 2016 Pele Pele Pla Pleiades. Pleiades Dust EP, yeah. which is a very bold, bold, probably like a masterpiece, the 30 minutes long. long. Like, well, how did that song come to be? Oh, I've been wanting to do a single track record for a long, long, long time because I'm a big fan of the Death Spell Omega EP. I'm a big fan uh, of the uh, I EP from the Sugar. I'm sorry, yeah. i got to close my phone here. I'm yeah. sorry. That's a good ring, folks. It's all good. It shows that we're we're it's normal. Then we we have so, flaws anyway. So we're just talking about making Pleiades dust. Yeah, Pleiades dust again. You know, the inspiration was uh, that I've been wanting to to do an EP for a long time, and I was totally into uh, I from Meshuga, uh like a chaining uh, from a Death Spell Omega. But the thing is that when you're signed to a record label. It's very, very rare that a record label want to invest money in making an EP. Usually, <coughs> an EP is like a fill in, uh, fill up the space record, you know, in waiting for a LP or something, yeah. you know. But like the, a sneak preview. Exactly, and they they kind of requires the same investment for publicity, and you gotta print records, and you know what I'm saying. But 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 the thing is that. From a record label perspective, EP are not lucrative, and they kind of fall in between the cracks. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what happened with Pleiades. You know, uh, the thing is, is that season 
were, were really open about it and they said, no problem, you, you do the record you want to do. You know, and uh, I think Pleiades got the same treatment as if it would have been an LP, but it's a single, uh, a single track uh, yeah. thing. And me, artistically, I've been wanting to, 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 to do this type of composition for a long time, like a very, like a long river thing, you know, peaks and valleys, until you, you have a lot of room, a lot of space to tell a story, you know? So uh, I, I, I find this record, there's a lot of space in the music, you know? So you can take your time to say things. It's not like, like an EP, which would be three songs and go, 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 done, 20 minutes, you know? Which is fine too, you know? Yeah, but nothing that, wrong with that's that. That's not the vision that I, that I have for that record. So uh, I'm very, again, you know, to me, it's may artistically, it's maybe, uh, the, the, to me, it's, it, I, uh, it, it's the record that I really hit uh, the, the, what I wanted to, to, to do. You know, I'm very, very proud of that record. Yeah. Not that I don't like the other ones, but it, this one is, it feels special. You know? yeah. yeah, and being as it now has been like almost seven years since we have any new Gorguts mm -hmm. music, what's the status with the new album? The new album, I'm going to start working on this right after this tour. You know, I, I took again, I took a long break from composition. My my mind was just not into it, and I don't, I didn't feel I had anything to say. You know, but now I have a clearer vision of what I want to do, so it it will be uh, an easier uh, an easier task to uh, to to do. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. before we go, just want to thank you for this interview, thank Luke. Thank you very much. Got a very time. firm fan shake. <laughs> like, is there just uh, anything else you want to plug plug in terms of like new new tours and stuff for the viewers that are no, watching this? No, I don't want to plug any tours. You know, I just want to. Th I, I I couldn't be more thankful to all the fans. You know, for coming up, coming on the tour, coming see us play, and and, and of course not just us, but see the tour. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful. No fan, no tour, you know. So yeah. that, that's how it works. And uh, yeah, that's why, you know, I like to meet as, uh, as many people as I can during in the evening and uh, shake their hand and thank them personally, you know, for uh, being involved in the, you know, uh, in the process. You know, it's because of them, you know, that we're still here today. So uh, I couldn't be more thankful. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Luke. So everybody, Luke LeMay from Gorguts. We'll see you next time.